what I'm going to talk about is the next generation of leaders. It's a program for at-risk teens that come uh, from um, low-income families. And what we do is we try to help them uh, learn the financial world, be better adults in the adult life, because where I come from in Jersey City, it's a little bit tough for these kids. So I'm trying to be a smooth and positive role model for them and so they can see that you can change things when you step up and be a great leader. Uh, I'm running for the 13th district because of the simple fact that in Hudson County, most of the leaders there are interconnected. And when, when you get interconnected, corruption starts to come. And then when corruption starts to come, uh, it, it just leaves a barrel of where people don't really respect government. So what I want to do is I want to just shake things up a little bit, uh, turn it around, and bring in some new faces, something that people haven't seen before. And that's basically like what I like to do. Uh, I've, thank you. Uh, I've written a couple of uh, books, which is uh, America's War, which deals with this health care crisis, because most people don't know uh, the youth is really struggling from health care. Uh, I'm not pro-Obama or against Obama, but I think his health care plans are, are, are going to help this the youth, because they really need it. It's not about anything else. Uh, with, with the health care plan that this, the youth is going to be in, we can actually buy into the system. Before, we couldn't do that. People my age couldn't get into the health care plan without it. This new bill allows people like me, my age, to get in. So that's basically why I am here to uh, set the record straight. The health care thing is not as bad as anybody would say it is. It's not terrible. Uh, there's real people out there that will benefit from it. And if you open up the pool, if you open up the pool and you put people like me into it, it'll bring down your premiums in four or five years. In the real you can buy a in shorts right now, today you can buy a in shorts. Actually, you can't. Right now, if you were to take your own insurance right now, most of the insurance companies, it, 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 would, talk, it would cost about $650 a month for someone like me. That's almost $5,000 a year. With this plan, with this plan, you would get 35% credit. That means with this plan, that's a 35% credit. That means I can get a subsidy. A subsidy that will allow me to purchase premiums. It actually will bring down your premiums in the long run. And yes, it will. It actually will bring down your premiums in the long run. No, not exactly. Where is the subsidy from? Where is it from? Well, when you fill out your forms, or, or well, mostly if you're uh, self-employed or um, anything else, when you fill out a form 885, you would get this, uh, that form from... Uh, no, 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 no. Where is the money coming from? Who pays for that? It's a subsidy. It's a government subsidy. Who? It's a government subsidy. Most of anything is a government subsidy. If you have... Are you on Medicaid right now? Are you on Medicare right now? Any any type of uh, Medicare or uh, government run is government subsidy. <laughs> We already know who pays for it. The taxpayers pay for it. I'm not, I'm not denying the fact that the taxpayer doesn't pay for it. I'm just saying this is going to make it a lot bit easier to get people who are not in the pool into the pool. My next issue. <laughs> the, the Congressional Budget Office indicates that for people in the individual market, premiums would increase between 10 and 13 percent. Granted, with a subsidy, if someone else is paying for it, you may, might pay less out of pocket. But if overall we're paying more as a society, how can costs be brought down? Well, when you bring in about 3,000 more into one set of pool, it'll bring down your premiums over five years' time. 
CBO scores also scores that, that fact. You can look it up on You can look it up at recovery.gov. CBO scores scores that fact that when you bring in extra people into a small, a small set of pool, that pool over time will generate and bring down premiums. 3,000%. We're going to make money on this. Okay. What, what are you. What are your views on uh, tort reform to rein in medical malpractice lawsuits? Um, tort reform, I'm actually for tort reform and to way we can uh, just negotiate uh, how um, doctors are being reimbursed for some of the care that they're given because most of the time they're not being reimbursed for it and then they uh, have to um, um, weigh in on um, malpractice issues. Um, malpractices from what they normally would do. So what I would say is that we reimburse them correctly, so that they don't have to uh, file paperwork. And that's actually what this 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 healthcare bill does. It actually opens up a way where they don't have to continuously file paperwork and, and be delayed on payments. What What is your position on the new healthcare laws' comparative effectiveness research provisions, in which the government will make treatment recommendations and can punish doctors for not following them? Uh, could you repeat that again? And, um, make your your so position on comparative effectiveness research and government treatment guidelines for doctors? Uh, I'm not. Um, I'm not into it all on that issue because I, I heard. Um, got, yeah, exactly. I, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, uh, under this legislation, the federal government will create a new research entity that will conduct trials and make treatment recommendations and that doctors will be incentivized to follow rather than using their own individual judgment about a patient's individual situation. What's your position on that type of research and its use in forcing doctors to follow centralized guidelines? Uh, that's a tough one. It would have to be dependent on the individual doctor because a lot of people would want their doctor to be more informed and more regulated. Uh, I'm going to this district, and honestly, I'll be serious, is the worst candidate you could have. So at least let this guy like get through all his issues so we can hear how he feels about everything. Because yes. I think that would be useful if we could do that. Could uh, provide your thoughts how you'd help bring jobs back to America. Okay, jobs back to America. With the small business tax credit that we have, um, that I would like to issue is where you would allow small businesses to uh, get a tax credit, and any type of tax credit that they can get will you know, force them to hire uh, employees. Uh, the program, the program, the program that I, I run is uh, it's it's basically off of a, a small chip, uh, a small program. Uh, where we get a tax credit, where we can hire up to 150 people and give them three thousand dollars, and that's nine weeks of, of service. So that's basically how you can train people to get into uh, new jobs for the future. Uh, it's a small tax credit of five hundred thousand uh, dollars will be subsidized by. Uh, what's your What's your position on the oh, global? Well, most, excuse me, but most most of all small tax credits are taxpayer funded even through any other type of loan. So let's not be clear on the taxpayer things. Most of the things in this country is funded by taxpayers. What's your position on global warming? What do you do on that issue? Global warming issues. <laughs> uh, that is not in my area of, of training. I'm mostly dealing with, uh, I'm mostly, uh, uh, Okay, thanks for, let's hear it for Omar Dyer. a lot of courage to run for office, and I'm glad that uh, somebody's standing up against Alvio Chirez. He's a true socialist. Now, Who the hell do you think you are? Uh, move a little bit to, to, to the right.